September is known as one of the months with the most hurricanes. The North Carolina coast has already kept a close eye on hurricanes Adalia, Lee and Franklin. So we're going to bring in meteorologist Claire Fry. And so what's the deal? What makes September like the month for the hurricane? The hot spot, right? Well, yeah. we do know that the peak is September 10th, right? Well, okay. there are two primary factors in why we get all of these hurricanes in September's one being the ocean waters throughout the summer sunshine with these hot days. It drives up those sea surface temperatures, which makes those storms able to have a little bit more fuel, a little bit more intense and also enhances that storm activity over the waters, especially in the Atlantic throughout the month of September. Another thing that we are looking at that is a primary driver in why these the tropics are so ramped up in September is wind shear. It actually is at a minimal at the end of August and throughout September. And a lot of times with wind shear, we're, we're able to see that kind of take apart storms, kind of make them a little bit more disorganized versus when they're isn't wind shear. Of course, we're able to see those storms a little bit more organized, which is right here in the center, kind of where you see the hurricanes frequency throughout the month of September, slowly beginning to wrap up by the time we head into November. So with the combination of those two things, those wind shear also being limited and also those sea surface temperatures also being on the 80s and 90s, so pretty warm. We're able to see a lot of developmental zones for these cyclones, and that's throughout the full month of September. All right, the Red Cross is estimating that the organization is responding to twice as many natural disasters as it was 10 years ago. From the tropics to tornadoes, ice storms, you need to be prepared. The Red Cross says it's a reminder for us to take stock. It's important when you're talking about hurricane preparedness that it really is personalized to your individual family. Jonathan McNamara with the American Red Cross says everyone should have a kit ready in case they need to evacuate. That kit should include food, water, flashlights, cell phone chargers, and medications. If you're forced from your home for a couple of days or longer, or if you're going to be coming to a Red Cross emergency shelter, we also encourage people to bring copies of those important documents, your passports, insurance information. But even after the hurricane passes, the danger isn't over. Avoid returning to storm damaged areas until emergency officials say it's safe. You could have down power lines. You could have floodwaters that have animals and snakes, as well as other chemicals and debris that can cause not only further harm to you, but can endanger pets and other members of your family. When you return home to the devastated area, there are essentials you should bring. It starts with making sure you have uh, gloves on and protective gear, um, especially if you could be dealing with homes that have mold. We encourage people to wear masks and eye protection. And take plenty of photos and videos of any damage, both inside and outside your home, for insurance claims. Michael George, CBS News, New York. And when it comes to hurricanes, the National Weather Service lists storm surge as the number one cause of most hurricane related deaths in the U.S. Storm surge happens when walls of water are pushed towards the shoreline during the hurricane. The severity of storm surge can change depending on geography. And if your vacation home is near a coastline with a shallow sea floor, it may be at a higher risk of storm surge. And when you see and hear about all the damage, your next question I'm sure is, all right, what does my insurance cover? Our Verify team takes a look. Hurricanes can bring significant rainfall and cause damaging storm surges, which flood low-lying communities. While most people have traditional renters or homeowners insurance, some may find they might not have coverage to rebuild after a flood. So let's verify. Do homeowners and renters insurance policies typically cover flood damage from hurricanes? Our sources are the Florida Division of Emergency Management, the Insurance Information Institute, Federal Emergency Management Agency, and insurance companies Allstate and Amica. Homeowners insurance is a way to repair or rebuild your home after something bad happens. Homeowners insurance, along with renters, also helps cover the cost to replace your belongings. Typically, when you buy a policy, the insurance companies will give you a detailed list of events that they cover or tell you you're covered for all events except those they specifically exclude. All of our sources say standard homeowners and renters policies typically exclude coverage for flooding. Allstate says this includes flooding brought on by or as a result of a hurricane. So no, homeowners and renters insurance policies do not typically cover flood damage from hurricanes. Instead, you can purchase separate flood insurance from a private company or a policy that's backed by FEMA's National Flood Insurance Program. These policies usually require you to purchase them at least 30 days before they take effect. 
If you didn't buy coverage ahead of time, FEMA also offers some assistance to people who live in areas that receive a presidential disaster declaration. However, Florida's emergency management warns the average payout to Florida residents from FEMA is usually only about $5,000, which may not be enough for repairs. This compares to claims filed by people with separate flood insurance who receive an average of $29,000. With you or Verify, I'm Brandon Lewis. And if your power goes out due to any kind of storm, and that happens to us here in the Triad quite often, your next step is to start your generator, right? The Deputy Fire Marshal of the Greensboro Fire Department, Hunter Pegram, joined us on the Good Morning Show to share a few recommendations for generator safety. Okay, so the main thing is to make sure you use your generator outside, exterior of your house, okay? Uh, make sure all windows, doors, garage doors are closed so that, um, so that we're not putting exhaust fumes in the house. But first and foremost is making sure that the generator is cool before you filling it up, before you put any type of fuel in it. We want to make sure it is cool, okay? Um, be familiar with your generator. Figure out where the exhaust port is so that it is exhausting away from the house, okay? Uh, once you figure out your components of your generator, have it at least 20 feet away from the house. 20 feet is the recommended distance. Um, and once the generator has been in a secure location, not going to tip over, um, it is now ready to be put in service. Another key recommendation, you need to have a carbon monoxide detector in your home as well. Now, even if hurricanes don't make landfall, they can still be deadly from afar. Large storms still generate rip currents, even from far away. The National Weather Service says rip currents are the number one weather related killer in the coastal Carolinas. Just earlier this month in the Outer Banks, for example, two people drowned on days with high rip currents. The Weather Service says if you're ever caught in a rip current, you need to swim parallel to the shoreline. 